Back. It's time now for flashback, a recap of stories that made headlines during the week. And we start with Monday in the nation's capital, Abuja, where President Muhammadu Buhari chaired an emergency security council meeting at the presidential villa. The national security advisor retired Major General Babagana Munguno at the end of the meeting urged people to disregard the travel advisory and terror lets issued by the United States and the United Kingdom government insisting that the country is safe. The Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces summoned this emergency Security Council meeting to receive briefs from his security chiefs over the recent terror alerts that put the country's federal capital in panic mode. Advisories from foreign embassies over a possible security breach forced several businesses to close down, and frightened residents had to look over their shoulders. At the end of the meeting, the security chiefs were able to convince Mr. President that the country is safe. The National Security Advisor says the fear caused by the United States and United Kingdom's warning of an elevated risk of attack in Abuja is unnecessary. The issue of Nigerians being made to panic is unnecessary. The situation in various areas of the Federal Capital Territory, the situation has been brought under control. And we're trying as much as possible to work with our neighbors and within the domestic situation to work with our foreign partners in a responsible way. The federal government insists the threat alerts are just routine safety measures issued by foreign embassies mainly for the security consciousness of their citizens and not to frighten Nigerians. We are in full engagement uh, with uh, foreign partners uh, and, that, uh, and that the security, uh, our national uh, our security um, uh, personnel and agencies are uh, fully on top uh, of the of the situation and that uh, they're really, uh, as they have said, uh, there's really no cause for alarm. The Chief of Defence Staff also talked about the gallantry of the armed forces in repelling an attack on the 221 Battalion Wawa Cantonment in New Busa, Ninja State. He says the troops are alert to counter any threat to national security. The night of 29th October 2022, Wawa Cantonment in Niger State was attacked. And of course, the alertness of the troops led to the neutralization of the attackers and their vehicles that were laden with IED and other items were impounded. And five of those attackers were equally arrested. Hopefully, this reassurance from the National Security Council will give citizens a sense of safety as security agencies prowl around the federal capital to exterminate any planned attack or threats to national security. And on Tuesday, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control released a health advisory urging residents to avoid all but essential travel to Uganda for now until the outbreak on Ebola in the country or in that country is contained. The NCDC says it was part of measures aimed at forestalling and containing any outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus disease into the country. The agency says, based on available data and risk assessment conducted, Nigeria was at high risk of importing the virus. It also advised that in a situation where travel to Uganda is unavoidable, travelers should avoid contact with obviously sick persons or suspected cases of Ebola during their stay. According to a statement issued by the Director General of the agency, Dr. Ifeda Aditifa, Port Health Services of the Federal Ministry of Health has or have scaled up the screening of passengers returning from Uganda at the point of entries. Same Tuesday, the presidential flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, presented his action plan to captains of industry and other key players in the private sector. During the presentation which held in Lagos, Ashiwaju Tinubu promised that his administration would revive Nigeria's dead industries 
if elected in 2023. The business community was fully represented with the president of Dangote Group, Mr. Aliko Dangote, Mr. Jimovia, Chairman Zenit Bank, Chairman Harris Holding, Mr. Tony Lumelu, former Chief Executive of Access Bank, Mr. Herbert Wigwe, and other leaders representing sectoral groups operating in the country. Political associates, party leaders, state governors, former governors, former and serving senators and lawmakers, senior officers of the campaign council were also in attendance. The APC presidential candidate, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, laid out his action plan before the business leaders and solicited for their support. He believes that a viable economy requires collaboration between political and business leaders. We must target and we will, I assure you, target growth at very least. We must achieve GDP growth of minimum 6%, if not 10%. I know. Promote agriculture. We shall continue to press reforms in the sector that will increase productivity, improve farm incomes while lowering food prices, and bring enough food to the table of ordinary people. For the vice presidential candidate of the party, the APC team is ready to revive dead industries, promote agriculture, provide power, produce and use made in Nigerian goods, build infrastructure, and most importantly, improve the country's security situation. The insecurity is a major deterrent of private enterprises and investments, not to talk of the trade to life and livelihoods. That is why we plan to adopt a proactive and intelligence-driven approach to addressing the nation's security challenges. These will include bolstering security forces in numbers, training, equipment, salaries, and welfare. The event also featured a panel session largely made up of young Nigerians who bought their minds intelligently on the developmental plan of the APC, which according to them is highly achievable. And now following plans by the Central Bank of Nigeria to redesign the Naira amidst the Naira slumping against the dollar, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Wednesday commenced a clampdown on borrow de change operators in Abuja and Kano. The operations were said to have disrupted the day's business as many of the BDC operators in Abuja went underground. Black market forex dealers were carrying on their businesses as usual when the AFCC operatives backed by armed policemen, stormed their makeshift stalls in the Wuse area of Abuja and took many of them into custody. The raid is expected to extend to Lagos, Onisha, Ibado, Port Harcourt and other major cities across the country. Also on Wednesday, the Nigeria Police Force deployed tactical squads to upskill security across the federal capital territory. The measure came days after advisories from the U.S. and Britain warned of a possible terror attack in the nation's capital. The authorities are trying hard to alleviate fears, especially among residents of Abuja, over the terror alerts advisories that have triggered concerns. Despite dismissing the advisories as alarming, we gathered that the security agencies are leaving nothing to chance. It has emerged that covert operations have resulted in the arrest of terror suspects, many of whom had infiltrated the nation's capital. But in the last one week, an uneasy calm has settled over Abuja. There has been no recorded security breach, and experts attribute this to several factors. The Kujie incident, we've seen an improvement in techniques, tactics, and procedures by the security forces. And so what we did is to show in the 36 states of the Federation that there are ongoing security operations. And that those security operations, if you pick each and every one of them, we can't even count the number of security operations. What we, what we did in those two reports is just present the ones that we know. It's Assistant uh, Inspector General of Police, Ameche Lumelu, is in charge of the counter-terrorism unit at the force headquarters. His unit recently conducted a counter-terrorism simulation in Abuja, 
with emphasis on protection for schools. Uh, the Joint Terrorism Analysis Branch, the uh, branch that counters violence, ex violent extremism, uh, the branch that liaises with different governments and different people, and uh, the tactical uh, branches, which are a little bit on the quiet side. The exercise is expected to morph into a full-fledged operation. It's a thing that's going to reoccur every three months or so, so that if there's any situation like that, everybody knows what role to play when it has to do with that. For its part, the FCT Police Command has deployed tactical teams. We have deployed all our intelligent assets, including our tactical uh, units, Joint patrol in the night, in the daytime, stop and search raiding, ongoing. So as we speak, Abuja is very, very safe. But the task of keeping the seat of power safe is even more challenging now than ever. Still on Wednesday, the Federal Executive Council approved the National Sports Industry Policy for the years 2022 through to 2026, which enables the final building of a business model into the nation's sports sector. The meeting chaired by Vice President Yemio Shibaju also approved the variation of the contract for the repairs of the east-west road in the south-south part of the country. The east-west road, that is arguably one of the most challenging road projects in Nigeria, has again come under the radar of the federal government. The Federal Executive Council has approved the variation order on the repairs of the east-west road projects from Wari in Delta State to Port Harcourt, capital of River State, to the sum of 260 billion naira. These will also fix the damage caused by the floods that hit more than 100 communities across the country. Word of contracts for the urgent repairs and special general maintenance of a few roads nationwide. Uh, this includes the construction of uh, Gugaram Guri Road in Yobe State uh, in the sum of 40 billion uh, with a completion uh, time of 36 months. The Federal Executive Council also approved the National Sports Industry Policy 2022 to 2026 that will promote the development of sports. The Minister of Sports and Youth Development says this policy will also look at the code of governance and regulation as it relates to sports federations in the country. The approval also covers the ability of the sports ministry to drive the application of a medley of funding and financing approaches to develop our infrastructure and to develop our sports. Also, a revised comprehensive emergency preparedness and response plan for the highly pathogenic avian influenza was presented to the Executive Council for approval. The Minister of First Agriculture of and Rural Peace Development Peace says Peace. there is the need to upgrade the existing policy which will also put in place the centers that will cater for bed flu victims. Currently, you know, we have sporadic, periodic outbreaks, again, that is plaguing the industry, which is why we have to upgrade to make sure we're always ready to move on. The Ministry of Agriculture is also planning to use dry season farming to make up for the losses caused by devastating floods that washed away farmlands and puts the country at risk of food shortage. Thursday recorded a flurry of activities at the National Assembly. At the Senate wing, the Independent National Electoral Commission's chairman requested for the sum of 50 billion naira for the Commission's 2023 budget. And this new request is a 10 billion naira increase compared with last year's budget of 40 billion. Our next chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, noted this in the document submitted during the Commission's budget defense session. And in that document, the sum of 2.6 billion naira was earmarked for off season elections in Kogi, Imo, and Bayelsa states are expected to hold in November next year. The chairman of the Senate Committee on INEC, Kabiru Gaya, said the committee 
will properly oversee the electoral body to ensure it's prepared for the upcoming polls. On Friday, Kaduna State Governor Nasrul El Rufai identified insecurity in the Northwest as a threat to the 2023 general election in that region, if not properly managed. He spoke while receiving the second and third quarter security reports presented by the Internal Security Commissioner, Samuel Arouan. Also, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, who attended the security meeting, maintained that the public exposure of the security alert by the UK and US government had done nothing but set Nigerians in a panic. Members of the Kaduna State Security Council have He's gathered and received the security report for the second and third quarter. It is presented by Kaduna State Internal Security Commissioner Samuel Aruan. We lost 285 lives. 985 we are kidnapped. We moved to third quarter. 161 uh, citizens were killed. You can see total is 804. This brings the total number of persons killed to at least 440, while over 1,700 others were kidnapped, with Kaduna Central Zone the most hit. Military offensive against bandits also yielded positive results. Several bandits were killed by ground and air strikes as troops raided their camps. At least 27 bags of fertilizer meant to be used in the production of improvised explosive devices were also seized, according to the commissioner. Governor Nasu Erufai lends his voice in support of the DSS director's alarm that insecurity in the Northwest may disrupt the 2023 general elections. We have identified that there is threats around the airport, which is being addressed, but we need, need to sustain it. We are likely to be challenged by political trouble. It's a thing that we really need to prepare for. The little thing we have seen, which is just the beginning, is an indication that there is a lot to be done. We need to profile political actors, map their facts, and bring them to justice before the elections. Reacting to security alerts issued by the United States Embassy in October, Nigeria's Information and Cultural Minister Lai Mohammed said he terrorized Nigerians and set the nation on panic mood. He then reiterated the unwavering confidence the federal government has in its intelligence agency's capability to effectively gather and promptly act on intelligence to forestall attacks. Whatever has been the intention of this security alert or this travel advisory, what it has done is that it has terrorized our people and it has set the nation in a panic mode. Other security officials called for the sensitization of citizens on the need to support security agencies with timely information. And finally, as we track the big stories of the week a federal high court sitting in abuja on friday gave the efcc permission to temporarily seize 40 properties that have been allegedly traced to embattled former deputy president of the senate ek kwerimadu the presiding judge justice Eyang echo gave the order following an ex party motion filed by the efcc the judge ordered the anti-graft agency to publish the interim forfeiture order in a national daily within seven days from the date the order was given. The interim forfeiture order includes 10 properties in Enugu, three in the United States, two in the United Kingdom, one in Lagos, nine in Dubai, and 15 located across the federal capital territory. It says members of the public interested in the properties are advised to approach the court within 14 days of the newspaper publication and show course while the properties shouldn't be permanently forfeited to the federal government. The case was adjourned till December the 5th this year.